Hi, thank you for joining me today on a very serious issue. My name is John Newby, and this is John 2028 Apologetics. Um, I'd like to start off this video with a Bible verse. It's going to be James 2, 8 through 9. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You're doing well. But if you show partiality, you are recommitting sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. So right here in the book of James, we have, if you don't love the person, any person as, your, as yourself, you're in sin automatically. You're in sin automatically. So to, to not love someone based upon, as we're about to read for, through further scripture about how they look or anything like that, is a sin. Racism is a sin. We have to understand something real quick before we go continue this video. The enemy wants to divide us. The enemy wants to divide us, regardless of what we look like. That's why he wants to divide us. He wants everything. He wants me and you to not get along because we are a reminder of the greatness of God and his majesty, how he can create, how he can create living life, how he can make things in his image like me and you. Brother and sister, black, white, yellow, red, doesn't matter. And it, we, we are a constant reminder to the enemy of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, his, his death and resurrection, and a constant reminder of the love that he has for us. He wants to disrupt that. The devil is the biggest thief in the universe. He wants you to be damned with him. And he has many weapons that he uses, as we're going to read later. And one of them is racism. Racism is a sin. 1 John 3.15 Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life biting in him. Okay? That is God speaking. Okay? You're a murderer. Jesus says it plain and simple. 1 John. 315, okay? And then where does racism come from? Where does it come from? Is it from um, society? Is it from uh, suppression from the government or white privilege or anything like this? The Bible tells you where it's from. Let's go to the root of it. And first, or excuse me, and the, the root of that is in John 7, 24 and in Matthew 15, 19, where it says Jesus uh, tells us about racism is comes from the heart. Racism comes from the heart, Matthew 15, 19. That's where, just where it comes from. Okay? And in John 7, 24, it says, Do not judge by appearances, but judge by the, with right judgment. Do not judge by appearances. This is a sinful way to live. It's a sinful way to act. You should never act this way. It is against God. Racism comes from the heart. That's where it comes from, Matthew 15, 19. Okay, and since God created us, he tells us where it comes from. It comes from our hearts. Well, and you got to get your heart cleansed, obviously. And how do you get your heart cleansed? The only way to get your heart cleansed is you turn it over. You can't do it. No amount of, of uh, d good deeds can do it. Nothing like that. You have to turn it over to the Son. You have to turn it over to Jesus Christ. That way your sins are forgiven. There's no other way. Only Jesus Christ. But he is the way. He's the only way. Okay, you can scrub a thousand hospital floors, doesn't matter, or feed a thousand screaming orphans, which are all great things, by the way, but none of it equals the blood of Yahweh spilt on a cross who resurrected for us three days later, the eternal God, Jesus Christ. None of it equals that. Okay, so no good deeds. You have to turn it over to him. Turn it over to him. Okay, Romans 2, 10 through 11 but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the, the Jew first and also the Greek. For God shows no partiality. God shows no partiality. Okay, when Paul wrote Romans, he was, look at the audience he was writing to. He was writing, at this time at the beginning of the church, we had Jews and Gentiles mixing. He was constantly hammering on almost all of his letters about how Jews and Gentiles People who don't look like each other, so there's some similarities to today, have to live and be together 
and one in Christ, one in Christ. And continues in Romans 10, uh, 12 through 13. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. See, he's hammering it. No distinction between Jew and Greek. For, uh, for this, there's me, a Lord, is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. Everyone. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. You know, Paul's hammering this in. You go to Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Now, this is important. This is important. You have to walk with the Spirit. Once you're saved, and you can tell people once they're saved because they're going to walk with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you, okay? And racism is not one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's not one of the in steps with the Holy Spirit. Racism is not, okay? Partiality is not. As we have heard, Jesus calls it, you're a murderer if you don't love your own brother. And the Bible tells us that what, the, what, what we consider to be a brother, there's neither Greek nor Jew. It's hammered in there over and over and over again. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Okay, but I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. So talking about sexual morality real quick, but he, he gets into the other stuff that we're talking about next. To keep you from doing these things, you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evidence. Sexual morality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I've warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passionate desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So, you know, this, this heartfelt um, writing by Paul in Galatians, he hits everything from sexual morality to divisions to racism to anger, everything, okay? And racism and, not, and judging people by their appearances is not in walk with the Spirit. You are not walking with the Spirit when you have these feelings inside your heart, Okay? Uh, Colossians three sixteen. Let the word of Christ dwell in your richly uh, teaching and uh, abolishing one another with wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spirit songs with a thankfulness your heart to God. Okay, so as we hear here, so the word of God is Christ in your heart as you walk with the Spirit. Okay, I'm going to end it with this. Make this very clear. Jesus makes this very clear in First Corinthians twelve. 13 for in one spirit we are all baptized into one body jew or greek slave or free and we're all made to drink of one spirit okay and if you have any of this in your heart pray to jesus turn it over to him ask the holy spirit to dwell in you from this time from this time to eternity if you have any of these any of this strife anger any of this in your heart division judging people by um, the way they appear to look or the way they look turn it over to the Father through the Son with the Spirit of the Holy Spirit please this we're talking eternal implications here you're called a murderer there's no murderers in heaven okay they're forgiven murderers but in the Greek, the word when they use the word murder, it's it's a, a present tense, not has murdered. Okay, so please, please turn it over. Don't listen to the world. The world wants us divided, because the the enemy is of the world. He doesn't want us to live together. Doesn't want us to be together. Because one body, intertwined together, regardless of race is a body of Christ. 
And that is what truly defeats the enemy when we're together as one. Thank you for your time watching this video. In Jesus' name I pray for you. Amen.